Hey everybody, an amazing story of a Tongan man named Lisa Foal who was climbing a tree on his native island when friends and family alerted him that a tsunami was coming as a result of the volcano eruption. And before he knew it, to make a long story short, he was transported via wave a grand total distance of six miles from his home island to the main island. And I'm, I'll read you an account from the publication, The Guardian UK, this is absolutely amazing. Tongan man swept away by tsunami, stayed afloat for 24 hours. Uh, it says a story of a Tongan man was washed away by the tsunami and who drifted and swam between islands for more than 24 hours has become one of the first to emerge from the island nation. Anyway, it goes like this. Uh, Liz Fowler is a retired disabled carpenter and he told Tongan radio station that uh, he'd been painting his home and that's on Saturday when he was alerted and his elder brother, he says, and a nephew came to his assistance and by that time the wave had gone through their lounge and they moved to another part of the house when a bitter wave of about nine feet, he says six meters, uh, he would estimate, arrived. And he said, bear in mind, I'm disabled. I cannot walk properly. And when I can, I believe a baby can walk faster than I, he said. He says, we hid uh, to the eastern side of the house. The waves are coming from the west, so we escaped that wave. And uh, here is the map of what happened to him. Lisa Flau was swept, number one, from his island of Ata. Number two, he floated and then was grounded on Tokatok Island. Number three, Falau then reached the island of Polo and Nukala. He says he finally reached safety, swimming to Sopu on the edge of Nuftala on the island of to Tonga Tapo. And this is with the underwater volcano that went super critical and erupted. That square is where he lived. He said they then climbed a tree with his niece while his brother ran to get help. When, they, when there was a lull in the waves, they climbed down, but then a larger wave hit. Wow. And it goes on, it says, when the wave, he's quote, when the wave break on land just below us, my niece Alvesa and I had nothing to hold on to and we were swept out to sea. That was 7 p.m. We floated at sea, just calling out to each other. It was dark and we could not see each other. Very soon, I could not hear my niece calling anymore, but I could hear my son calling. Paulo said at that moment he decided not to answer his son for fear that he would risk his life to save him. The truth is no son can abandon his father, but for me, as a father, I kept my silence for if I answered him, he would jump in and try to rescue me. But I understand the tough situation. I thought if the worst comes, it would only me. Paulo said he figured that if he clung to a tree trunk, his family would at least be able to find his body if he died. I floated and was grounded to the east island of Tetecoke. Fallout said at one point on Sunday morning, he saw a police patrol boat heading to Atala Island. Quote, I grabbed a bag, a rag, excuse me, and waved, but the boat did not see me. It was then returning to Tonga and I waved again, but perhaps they did not see me. He then tried to get to the island of Paul setting off at about 10 a.m. and landing at about 6 p.m. Sunday. Quote, I called and yelled for help, but there was no one there. My mind was now on my niece, that we were washed away together, and now I have survived. Paul said he then focused on his next move. I was now strong-minded that I can make it to Masapo, he said. It's on the western edge of the capital of Nufala, on the main line of Tok Tok Tonga Tapu. I was thinking, he said, about my sister Hoffa, who is suffering with diabetes, and my youngest daughter, who has heart problems. All this was racing through my mind. 
At around 9 p.m., Fallout City staggered toward a house in Sopu, eventually arriving at the end of a tar-sealed public road and was picked up by a passing vehicle and taken to the driver's home. The Guardian has not been able to establish what happened to Fallout's son and the niece he was with in Atala. However, only three people have confirmed to have died following the tsunami, none from Atala. So there's hope. Another son, Chikawalva Afalo, took to Facebook to express his gratitude. A story I'll never forget in my life. While talking with family in Tonga, my tears continued to fall when I think of my dad swimming around the ocean after the tsunami hit. My heart is broken, imagining you drinking in the seat water, dad, but you're a strong-willed man. The story has gone viral on social media since it was first said by Tongan journalist uh, Marion uh, Kupu. According to Erica Radwag, an Olympic-level swimming official from the Pacific, Fuala's survival story is impressive. I should say so. It's absolutely amazing that he was giving, that he was fleeing a catastrophic event to be under that kind of pressure, mentally and with additional physical pressure of fleeing in the dark. Even very experienced swimmers have physical boundaries and set parameters, but it takes a different mindset to do what he did. It's not like he fell off a boat. He was escaping an erupting volcano swept away by a tsunami. There are more physical obstacles such as ash, debris, waves, and other factors that would have made us swim a lot more challenging. So something else. I mean, it's a heck of a story. Um, and, you know, you have to say God was with them. God was with all of them to provide those opportunities to survive. And I hope he gets reunited entirely with his family heck of a story and it makes you wonder it's said there but for the grace of God go I what how, how fortunate you are to not have been in that situation but also are you prepared for that unforeseen event that you didn't think would happen to you I hope I never find out subscribe to Zenny 62 and bookmark oklanewsnow.com